All right. So in the last, I, I hope everybody is clear with the topics that have been covered till now. Now today what we'll be talking about is, we'll be talking about how we'll be storing the information onto the device. When I talk about the information storage onto the device, there are a variety of attributes that I can use, a variety of manner that I can store my information onto the device. Here you can see I have grouped them together. One is the internal storage, other one is the external storage, then we have the shared preferences, then we have the SQLite database. So I hope shared preferences is clear to everyone because we covered it in the last class. Can you all quickly respond back onto the chat window? Wherein we created an XML file of the shared preferences and we read it back. All right? So now today we'll be talking about internal storage and also the external storage. We'll be talking about the SQLite databases in the coming classes. All right, because this is a completely a different topic altogether. So today we'll be talking about internal and external storages. So whenever I talk about the internal storage story, you can save the files directly onto the device's internal storage. By default, the files saved to the internal storage are private to your application and other application cannot access them. So if I talk about I'm saving a file onto the internal storage, even I as a user cannot access those files. All right. Just to tell you what something more about it, whenever the user has got the root access permissions, that is, he is the root user of the device, then only he can have access to these application files. So whenever the user uninstalls your application, these files are also removed along with the application because these files are bundled with the application package only. So as soon as the user uninstalls the package, it also gets uninstalled. So how we'll be using it up? We'll be calling the open file output with the name of the file and the operating mode. The operating mode could be a write-only operating mode, it could be an append-only operating mode. We'll be, we'll be talking about them in a few moments. Alright, so let's see an example here. So I've already created an example for everybody to take a look. If you have any doubts in this complete example, you can just respond back onto the chat window. So I'll be walking you here with the complete example code that I have covered here. So let me just show you what I have in the layout of the file here. If I go on to the graphical representation of this, all right, I have got a hand raised. Let me check, just check who it is. All right, I think everybody just, I think someone someone just raised his hand, right? Oh, all right, Shivraj, uh, if I talk about shared preferences, if you remember, we talked about shared preferences in the last class, all right? Wherein we called the sample shared preference class, all right, we, whatever values were there contained in the edit name, edit pass, were sent, saved into the shared preferences using the shared preferencing editor, all right? Then we put up the various key names and key values and we committed the editor. And to retrieve it back, we just call the settings and just set the text. I hope uh, you, you remember this now. All right, so now we'll be talking about the internal storage. So I have, as I was telling you about the internal storage, I have shown you the UI that I have, I'm using in my present application. So this contains a label, edit box, label, edit box, and a button save information. And beneath that button, what I have also done is, I have placed two text views. If you all can see, I have placed two text views. Since these text views are not containing any text, they are not showing up onto the screen yet. All right. Now here I go on to the internal storage. I created the text view name and number. Taken all the references, all right, from the XML part. Text view name, number. Then I have created a method read the file, which I'll just comment for the time being. Because first we'll be saving information onto the file system, and then only afterwards we'll be reading it back. All right. Here onto the save click listener, what I have done is, I have taken the name and number, whichever was stored into the edit boxes. I'll, what I'll just do is, just first run this up onto the emulator. 
so that you can have a clear look at the user interface and you can make some cues out of it. So here you have the name and number. So what I'm doing here is on, on the click of the save button, I'm getting the name and number, creating an end of line separator here, which will be like separating the various line items. Right? Then I'm creating a buffered writer object. What this writer object will do is do to me is it will open up an output stream file. Because whenever I'll be writing something onto the file system, I'll be working on the output stream writer. This will be operating on an object of open file output. And here you can see the file name that I'm giving to is user information. So user information is my file name here. And then we have the mode writable. Because I want to write something onto the file system. Then what I'm doing is I'm working on the writer object, buffered writer object. And here I say write the name plus the end of line separator. Similarly, the number plus the end of line separator. And I finally close the buffered writer. So this is what I have done to save the file onto the file system. So now if I do it up, you can see here if I type in anything, I say type in name. And I say for example, I type in Sagar's name here. All right, phone number, I can type in any random number. I say type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When I click on save information, this file would have got saved. Now, in order to see this file onto the file system, we have to go to the data data folder and under the data data folder, we have to look for com.ds.samples. Go on to the DDMS view, go on to the file explorer. Data, data, and now find my package com.ds.samples. So here is the package name. Now go on to the file section and here we have the user information file section. I just pull it out onto my new D drive here and show you the contents of the file. So this is the user info file that I have. I'll just open it up with word here. And you can see that the file contains two values, the username and the password. So this file has already got created. So I have shown you where this file gets stored onto the device's file system. If I go on to Java now, so I have saved the file system. Now what I need is I need to retrieve back the information from the file system. So I'll just uncomment this method here, read the file. And once I uncomment this up, you can see what exactly I'm trying in order to read this file. So here I created a string end of line separator. I, instead of the buffered reader, I created a read buffered writer. I created a buffered reader object. This buffered reader object works on the input stream out instead of the output stream writer. And it opens the file for input mode. Here you can see the this similarities between these elements. It's like the differences between writing mode and the reading mode. All right. So here I say open file input for read only. Create a variable string for lining. Create a counter. So what I'm doing is if my counter equal to zero, so I understand that this is the name value that I'm picking up. So I set the name to the text view name. And similarly, if, I, if the counter is not equal to zero, it is the next line in the in the file system. So I set it up to the second line of the text view. So let me just run it up. Now you'll be seeing information onto the text views, whichever is being read from the file system. And you can see that. Here we have Sagar and the name and the password that we have was keyed in here. All right. So this is how you'll be saving up and reading up files back from the inf information system or say the internal storage from the memory. So here is the on-click listener. If you all want, you can just take a look at this on-click listener. If you have any query, you can respond back onto the chat window. I'll give you all a minute here to just take a look at this complete code. If there is anything that you cannot understand here, just let me know about it. Whenever you all are done, you can just respond back onto the chat window that it, if it is clear to everyone, you can just write clear, go ahead. 
Otherwise, if there is any problem, you can respond back with the problem. Asif says clear. Anybody else? The Ladri says clear. Can you all also can the others also respond back? All right. So it seems it's clear to everyone. So now we'll just close this project. Just remember that I did not use any special permission. All right, Pradeep has a query here. All right, Pradeep, uh, what, what do you want me to repeat again? You can just respond back. What is not clear in this particular sample, I'll just cover that for you. The line separator, Pradeep what I'm doing here is for the line separator, it's just that I'm actually inputting the first value, then adding a line separator to it. It's like a slash n, the new line character that I'm adding. So that the file system recognizes that name, then a line separator, then the password. It's like a formatting that I'm doing on the files. That is what I'm doing with the help of the line separator here. That's correct, that's correct Niladri, that is what I'm doing here. Alright, so this is what we have done in the internal storage. Now let's talk about the external storage. 